Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence and this is my channel about electric car ownership from the perspective of a first-time EV owner. If you don't have the latest model of Kia, like my one-year-old 2019 Kia Niro EV, then chances are your head unit and navigation software are out of date. Well, if you want to know how to get the latest version of software into your Kia and make it look like this, well, stick around. I'll let you know in 10 seconds. Just a quick note, if you follow my channel, you'll know that in my last video, I gave myself a personal goal of 3,000 subscribers. At the time of recording, I was at about 2,470. I usually get about 100 subscribers a month, and in seven days, I gained over 500 subscribers, and today, as it stands, as I'm recording this, my channel is at 3,100 subscribers. It is astounding, and blows me away at the support that I get from the electric car enthusiast community. I wanted to say thank you to every single person who subscribed because it shows me that you really appreciated what I did in my last video, the comparison of the 2020 and 2019 Kia Niro EV. It just, it's amazing. Thank you very much. It really makes me want to make more content and continue doing this as a hobby. I love it. So thanks again. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could click on the subscribe button. And if you like this video towards the end, please click the thumbs up. It uh, also encourages me to make more content. There you go. So let's get to it. The first thing you need to do is head over to the Kia Mappensoft website. I'll put a link to it down below. Mappensoft is a company that makes maps for multiple companies. So you have to make sure that you're at mappensoft.com slash Kia. Then click create an account and enter all the appropriate information. Your first name, your last name, your email, a password that you're going to remember, confirm the password, check the box to confirm that you're not a robot, and then click create account. Since I've already got an account, I'm just going to sign in with mine. When you log in with your account, you'll see you can select the country, Canada or US. Just be sure to select the one that's appropriate for you. Select the model year of your car, mine's 2019, then select the model. Mine's the Nero EV, so that's what I'll be choosing, and then select search. The page you end up on shows you the information about your car and the map version that's available, as well as a space to enter your VIN. The cost, as you can see, for me, is $30 Canadian plus shipping. Enter your vehicle identification number in the VIN box. Read the terms and conditions in the orange box. Check the box off once you've agreed to them, and then click Add to Cart. In the pop-up box that appears at the top of the page, just click on Go to Checkout. This page will show you the summary of your order. You can click on the little down arrow to see what the item is in your cart. It should be the map that you chose. On the left side, you'll see your shipping address. If you don't have an address, then you can just click on the new address button and enter the information as appropriate. Then when you scroll down towards the bottom of the page, you've got your shipping options. Now, in my case, I chose FedEx. I was willing to pay the extra money because I didn't want to take a chance and wait for USPS and Canada Post. The payment option that's available is PayPal. So click on the PayPal option. Enter your information, pay for it, and then wait for your package to arrive. If you chose to pay extra and take FedEx for the shipping option, then you should receive an envelope like this within a few days. Mine took about four or five business days, so for me, it was worth the ridiculous $36 Canadian for the shipping. Now, inside this envelope, what you'll receive is what looks like a DVD case, but it's actually an SD card. And here's what that looks like. Now, in this, you receive a packing slip that has your personal information, as well as the VIN number of your car, a manual. And what's interesting about this manual is that it includes multiple models and multiple years on the cover. Now, I highly doubt that this single SD card contains all of the appropriate information for every single model, because the hardware can be different from year to year, as well as from model to model. This is what the new SD card looks like. And if you're curious, this is what the original SD card looks like in my 2019 Kia Niro EV. And when you perform the update, the reason I say this is highly doubtful that this would support all of these models is that there are actually firmware updates, not just the actual map software update. And what I mean by firmware is there's hardware in the car that requires updates of a chip that's inside of it. Now, mine actually updated the GPS, the modem, as well as something called UCOM. And I'm not 100% sure what that is, but I'm guessing that it's probably something for the UVO Connect, which is the remote control software for the car. So let me show you how to do it. 
Before I update the software on my Nero EV's head unit, I want to find out what version of software that I currently have so that I'll know if I get the update for Apple, CarPlay, and Android Auto at the same time. Now, according to the manual that's in here, you have to have version 11, 41, 52, or higher, and you don't get the updates. So let's check that out right now. It's under All Menus, Setup, System Info. And I have 11.47.44, so I'll only be getting the map software update, which is fine for this demonstration. It's not like I'll be using it, though, because I use Android Auto all the time. So let's perform the update. The first thing you have to do is turn off the car. I'll just open my door and close it, so that'll turn everything off completely. And then you have to remove the SD card, which is found under this little plate here. There's a little ridge where you can pull this out and it slides sideways, push, and remove the original SD card. Now this one came with my car in April. It doesn't really say much, but here's a good look at that. And now I'll remove the SD card that I received from its packaging. And just take the new card, insert it, be sure to insert it with the pins pointing downwards, and then press until it clicks. It doesn't really click that much, and then release. And you can replace the SD card cover, and then start your car. Now it's gonna be very important that you don't turn off the car or do anything to interrupt this as it updates. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your car has a charge it detects that there's an SD card that's been inserted and the system will reboot. Now the nice thing that uh, comes in here is a very detailed instruction manual on how to do this and it tells you these exact same steps. So you get the confirmation screen that I find annoying and once you've done that it tells you that you've got an update for the software and then click OK. Just so you know, the update time is approximately 25 minutes. That's what it took for my car. Now I've sped this up in three steps. I started with 2,500% speed up time and then dropped it to 2,000% and then finally 1,000% when it got to the firmware update. I wanted you to be able to see what those updates looked like. The longest part of this update was definitely the preparing phase and the copying of the files. It was very tedious and boring because the progression bar didn't really advance that much. So this won't take very long, I have sped this up quite a bit, but uh, once it gets to the firmware update section you'll see the GPS modem and UCOM updates, and then it gets to the interesting part. Interestingly enough, the UCOM update was actually longer than the GPS and the modem update, so I'm guessing it was a substantial update. Something I found annoying during the process was towards the end when the system was rebooting, XM radio would come on on channel 1. And this happened two or three times if I'm not mistaken. So just turn off the radio when it happens. You might not be able to turn off the radio the first time you press the radio button, but it will work the second or third time you press it. The biggest difference that you'll notice when the system comes online for the first time is that the map is redesigned to a more Google Maps style or modern design. The My Menu button is another difference that I noticed. Instead of being an icon of a guy or whatever it was supposed to be, it's now a folder with a couple of colored dots on it. Another change that I noticed was at the top right, instead of saying LTE where the cell bars are, it says UVO now. I thought that was a nice little detail. Something else that's new is in the All Menu section, if you swipe completely to the right, there's a third section that now has an item called Sounds of Nature. You can listen to the sound of the rainforest, raindrops, waves, people walking in snow, an open cafe, and one or two others. Interesting, I kind of like the sounds of forest one. Let's head back to the All Menus section, and we'll select Setup, then System Info, because there are changes here. The main change of the software information page is the fact that at the top right you now have the updated date, as well as a big button at the bottom to perform an update for the next version. You can no longer downgrade to the previous version, I tried, and it doesn't work. 
Before I get to the other big change in the system, I wanted to show you that the EV section didn't change at all. I went through pretty much everything and I didn't note any other differences in the menus themselves, and that includes the EV pages that you see here. One more detail, I wanted to show you the streaming audio page because I can't remember if the progression bar at the bottom was exactly the same as in this version, so here's a quick look at it. In one note, the streaming bar at the bottom cannot be used to skip forward or backward to a certain section in the song. A notable change that was made to the system software points of interest in the navigation was something called La List. They've added 1,000 restaurants to the points of interest list. They've got it separated by different categories. As you can see here, you've got fast food, restaurants, and coffee shops. I'm going to speed this video up in a second, but I wanted you to see the length of the list and the speed at which it scrolls when you grab the scroll bar. It's astounding how many places there actually are available in the list. And this is only for fast food restaurants within 25 kilometers of my current location. Since I never really used the navigation software that much before this update, I'm not 100% sure if this was a feature that was available, but when you tap on a location to select it for your destination, at the top of the map, you can actually see the address and phone number, and you can even call the place by clicking on the phone icon. As I just mentioned, for the sake of saving a whole bunch of time, I'm going to speed this up at certain sections just so you can have a quick look at what I'm scrolling through, and I'll slow it down when it gets to something that's more important. For the charging station list, I don't think there's a difference from the previous version, other than the addition of new charging stations that were added since last year. I may be mistaken, but here's what it looks like. Even though my Nero EV is 100% electric, they have gas stations as points of interest, and I thought this was interesting because sometimes you just want a snack or you need to take a break to go to the bathroom, so this could be convenient on long trips. Another feature of the map software is that you're able to choose what points of interest you want to see displayed on the map itself. All of the points of interest that I mentioned before, and the ones you can see on the screen, are part of this list. All you have to do is check off the ones you want to see on the map, and their icons will be displayed. As you can see here, you've got Tim Hortons and Starbucks icons on the map. I'm going to slow the video down here just so you can see the traffic information section of the menu. I've used Android Auto 100% of the time up until the update of my navigation software, and then I tested it because I wanted to see how good it was. Now what's interesting is that the traffic calculation was actually quite accurate with regards to a route that I took the other day. It surprisingly made me take an off-ramp that brought me to a side road that bypassed most of the traffic before I got back onto the main highway. So this update seems to be doing quite well with regards to real-time traffic. The last thing I'll show you before I get to the actual use of the navigation software are the choices of colors of the map that you can have. Kia has added the option for milk, cafe latte, and mocha. I think somebody at Kia has been drinking too much coffee. So what does the new navigation look like when you start to use it? Let me show you. I want to start by apologizing for the shaky video. My cell phone has better quality than my GoPro to get up close to the screen, but the optical image stabilization goes bananas when I drive my car around. Something I like in the navigation software is the progression bar that shows you the distance live to your next exit. The 3D buildings are a nice touch, and the lanes are well marked, so it's difficult to make a mistake when you're following the instructions on the screen. On June 23rd, this video was completely finished, uploaded, and ready to go for June 26th launch. And then I discovered something when I went downtown. I noticed that on the map view, there were 3D buildings. Now this is a new feature that you can find in the menu section of the maps configuration, and it says 3D buildings. I thought that that was the 3D buildings in the turn-by-turn -turn navigation view, but it seems IKEA updated the maps to have 3D buildings in the map view like Google Maps. There are two important notes about this update. If you live in Canada, I'm not sure about the US, that'll be to be confirmed by one of the viewers. If you own a 2020 Kia, not just the Nero EV, but pretty much all Kias that have touchscreens, then you're allowed to get these updates two times a year for 10 years, absolutely free. All you do is go to the website that I showed you earlier in this video, and when you select 2020 and choose your purchase option, you'll be able to download the update without having to pay for it. Unfortunately, 2019 and older don't qualify for this, which is why I had to pay for mine. The other important note is that the map that's included in the car is not just for Canada or the US, it's for North America. So when I plan a route from here to, let's say, New York City, I get all of the points of interest and the appropriate route and even the charging stations that are available based on what's in the system and update. So if you are worried about traveling from Canada to the US or vice versa, not a problem, the map has you covered.
If you'd like to find out about my future videos before anybody else, you follow me on my Instagram account. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I post pictures of things that I purchased for my Nero EV before I put them into a video, as well as pictures of EV related and sometimes not so EV related things that may be of interest to you. I also have an Evolution webpage that I'll link down below as well that may be good for you because it is a catch-all that puts all of my YouTube content as well as my Instagram pictures on one place for you to view. I have my Evolution Facebook page, which you can go view other things that I don't necessarily post on Instagram or YouTube. And if you have any questions, you can ask them to me there. On the topic of questions, I'm in the province of Quebec and I do have some viewers that are French Canadian that don't speak English very well and have a harder time understanding it, but they do watch my videos and I appreciate it. But I just want to give them a quick shout out to make them understand that they can ask me their questions in French, so please bear with me. Si vous écoutez mes vidéos et que vous êtes francophone, mais que vous ne comprenez pas l'ensemble de ce que j'ai à véhiculer dans mes vidéos, n'hésitez pas à me poser vos questions dans la section des commentaires ou sur ma page Facebook. En français, ça va me faire plaisir de répondre à vos questions. Donc, ceci étant dit, merci d'avoir écouté ma vidéo. With that being said, I just wanted to say thanks again for subscribing to my channel, for clicking that thumbs up button. It really, really makes me happy when you do that. Thank you very much, and once again, thanks for watching. Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence, and this is my channel about EV. No. Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence, and this is my channel about electric car ownership from the perspective of a first time EV owner. If you don't have the latest. Really? with the singing bird. Come on, go fly somewhere else. Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence and this is my channel about electric car ownership. I love... Okay.